As Raptors Summer League got underway, most if not all eyes were on Scotty Barnes and in some of the games like the one against Charlotte, he absolutely delivered. So in this video, we're going to look at how Scotty Barnes showed us that he is NBA ready. Let's get into it. Welcome NBA Raptors fans to Amateur Hour Sports. This is the channel where you get NBA content with a focus on the Toronto Raptors at least four days a week. That is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. This is your Monday episode. We were breaking down Scotty Barnes' Summer League performances so far. So if you like what you see from today's video and you want more of myself talk about the NBA and the Raptors in videos and content just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to share support to the channel on our road to six thousand subscribers you can help us get there by subscribing and if you want more raptors content check out our twitch channel twitch.tv slash amateur sports where we break down everything going on in the nba at the start of every stream tuesday thursday sunday and we now have a stream archive channel called amateur hour archive the link is in the description for these if you miss any stream you just want to catch anything that we did on stream talk about nba playing some video games make sure you check out the amateur archive channel and subscribe to that channel as well as we're going to be consistently uploading there from now on but Let's get down to business for today's video because we are talking about Scotty Barnes' summer league performances, mostly talking about the one against the Charlotte Hornets, where the Raptors, well, they didn't have their best game, let's just say that. They ended up winning 80-79 to after an amazing comeback, a comeback that was amazing to watch as the Raptors fought back from what seemed like an impossible deficit to overcome the odds and win the game. Now, again, this is just summer league, so take it for what it is. I'm only going to say it now. Take it for what it is throughout the entire video. But this is very reminiscent of the actual Toronto Raptors team. You know, the Raptors have this never say die attitude. I mean, well, they're not taking at least. Never say die attitude. Even when they are, you know, down by whatever amount of points, they're going to fight to the end. And even when they were tanking, it did seem like even with just a couple minutes left, sometimes the fight came too little too late. But they always had that fight until the final buzzer because there is that winning mentality instilled within the organization still from that 2019 NBA championship. And it's nice to see the young guys with that same sort of fight, that same sort of desire. And it also helps that Scotty Lewis had one of the most brain dead moments in NBA Summer League history when he just gave the ball to Delano Banton. And, you know, speaking of Scotty Lewis, also got crammed on my predator two in the game, but he actually had a pretty good game. But the other Scotty is the one we are concerned about. Scotty Barnes, who was the leader of this comeback, and he put up some insane numbers. He put on a show against the Charlotte Hornets with 23 points, five rebounds, four assists, two blocks, and a steal to go along with that. And, you know, people always love to jump on Scotty Barnes when he doesn't have an efficient night, but how about the efficiency in this one here? 10 for 18 shooting. Scotty Barnes was great, was hitting threes, was hitting mid-range shots, was getting through, was dunking, moving in transition, blowing by defenders to go for a layup, can switch his shot as he's going up to a reverse. There was plenty to like about Scotty Barnes' performance. Other guys chipped in as well, but we're focusing on Scotty Barnes. And what we saw from Scotty Barnes throughout the entire summer league so far is that his defense is absolutely NBA ready. There is no discussion that needs to be had about that. His defense is absolutely NBA ready. We can see, you know, the switchability. And he said as he got drafted that he could play, you know, anywhere on defense. He could guard the one for the five on defense. Now, everybody does talk about players who can guard the one for the five. OG Ananobi comes to mind. Uh, Pascal Siakam also kind of comes to mind. But a lot of guys who say that can't quite guard, you know, one through five. Maybe they can guard the two, three, four. And they have to. They switch on, then guard the one through five. But Scotty Barnes is a player who actually can guard the one through five. And I loved how they deployed him at the top of a zone defense. So just the first point of contact for the opposition as they come up with the ball and his long wingspan, his big hands, and his just defensive instincts make it so difficult for other players to combat. And, you know, we've seen that he's getting steals, he's getting blocks everywhere. He's just playing hounding defense in general. His defense has been outstanding. His ability to read offensive sets, his ability to switch, his ability to see danger has been spectacular. And even when the offense isn't there, we we know that the defense isn't there and that Scotty Barnes is going to be able to replicate this sort of defensive prowess in the NBA. We always knew that we were drafting him for the defense and that we could figure out a lot of the offensive stuff later. So to see that the defense is as good as it is, honestly, better than I thought it would be, even though I had high hopes the defense, is a very good sign for the Toronto Raptors. But where question marks were going to arise was with the offensive part of his game. And admittedly, in some of the summer league games, they haven't been the best in terms of his offense. Defense has always been there, but when he's not playing particularly well in offense, it does showcase. And you can kind of see maybe a little bit of frustration 
frustration boiling with Scotty Barnes because there is, you know, all these eyes on him. He is under a bit of a microscope. Everything he does, if he misses a shot, everybody's going to be fixating on that stuff. But how about a game like this to kind of settle those nerves? 23 points against the Hornets, which will bode very well as the Raptors go into their final summer league game tomorrow against the Brooklyn Nets, which by the way, we will be watching along on the stream if you want to check those out, 5.15 p.m. Eastern time. But would this game, it'll be nice to kind of transition to that with this great performance on his back, go into the preseason, whatever it may be for him, with a lot of momentum. Because, you know, the couple of games leading up to the Charlotte game, offensively, there were a little bit of struggles. You know, didn't shoot very efficiently. And my biggest problem with him is that he could pick up, you know, what's outstanding about, you know, his size, his athleticism, is that he can pick up his dribble from like the top of the three-point line take his two steps and get in line for a layup. But sometimes with those big steps, his head kind of goes down. He gathers a little bit too early and then he gets swarmed and doesn't really have a plan B if he can't lay it up and chucks up maybe a pretty difficult shot. I thought that was a lot better against the Hornets. He read the defenses a lot better, was kicking out a lot better. And the four assists really don't do him justice here because you know NBA level talent, which is going to be on the Toronto Raptors, would be able to pick up a lot of the passes because a lot of the passes where Scotty Barnes fizzed it into a backdoor cutter, mainly Freddie Gillespie, and they would just literally drop the ball and lose the ball, go out, or they turn it over. And it happened to Freddie Gillespie, I believe, on two, maybe three occasions. Speaking of Freddie Gillespie, wow, has he had a bad summer league. But Scotty Barnes already looks good as a playmaker, already looks outstanding as a defender. Now, having this playmaking talent with other guys in the Toronto Raptors, the more talented players like the Siakams, the Ananobis, the Trents, the Van Vliet's, the Boucher's, et cetera, et cetera. Having that sort of talent around him is just going to enable that playmaking even further. And we're already seeing shades of that playmaking in Summer League. I thought that what was the difference here for Scotty Barnes against the Hornets rather than other games was his aggressiveness and his willingness to take over. He is the best player on this Summer League team, uh, along with Prejda Tua and Malachi Flynn, also very talented players. And he really, we saw for the first time his desire to take over a game. And my goodness, he absolutely absolutely took over this one, you know, spinning for fadeaway jump shots, attacking the rim, being aggressive, asserting himself as the dominant player on the Toronto Raptors. The dominant ball handler was picking his passes, but mainly just offensively being that ball dominant player. And I think that from what I've seen in Summer League, his best position is going to be as a sort of point forward, one of the main ball handlers. I wouldn't even be upset you played him in the guard position because maybe we have a little bit of a lack of height in those positions. And the fact that we're seeing all these great playmaking attributes in Summer League means it's going to translate to even better playmaking in the actual NBA where he's got more talented players around him, as I said. You know, maybe he won't be the main focus for the opposition's defense. Maybe that gives him a little bit more space. Playing in transition, the Raptors Summer League team has loved to push the ball as quick as possible, run very quick sets. I think this is something that the Raptors did, you know, in 2019, 2020, that maybe last season they kind of diverted away from, but the ability to run in transition and have the playmakers who can pick that pass in transition, like Malachi Flynn, like Fred Van Vliet, and especially Scotty Barnes, is going to be very good for the Raptors. It's going to make their offense very nice, and it's going to be very difficult to play against. But offensively, the shooting is what was kind of the biggest question mark about Scotty Barnes. This game and people, you know, we've heard the Raptors in the pre-draft workouts. They've said that you know his shooting is fine, his shot mechanics aren't broken, and Scotty himself and all his trainers have said that he has got a lot better at shooting even since his season ended with Florida State. Now, at the start of the season, he progressively got better with his shooting, and apparently he's been working very hard on it. And you know what? I have to say that when it comes to his shooting, it's evident that he has put the work in because Scotty Barnes isn't just a guy who's just going to catch and shoot and maybe hit a three. Like Scotty Barnes is showing the willingness, the aggressiveness, and the confidence confidence as well. The confidence is the biggest thing for me to take on those three-pointers, even when he has a defender on him. There was one on against Charlotte where defender right up in his face, stepped back a little bit, created a little bit of space, and pulled up for three and knocked it down. He is not afraid to take on these shots, even though he is not the most efficient three-point shooter. It absolutely looks serviceable. And if the Raptors can get a good preseason in with him, work on those shot mechanics, then he is going to be a solid three-point shooter in the NBA. And that's all you really need him to to be. My worry was just maybe being a little bit one-dimensional. In my pre-draft analysis of player, defenses kind of collapse a little bit into the paint when he has the ball because they know he doesn't really have that threat from the outside. But if he generates 
any sort of threat where he's shooting like 30 to 35 percent from three then all of a sudden you aren't just going to be able to watch him on the outside you actually are going to have to go play against him and with that insane size six foot nine would that great wingspan would those athleticism those long legs that he has it's just going to enable every other part of his game and, and upgrade every other part of his game because the defender has to play, play so close to him and we've seen on many occasions in summer league so far scotty barnes has the ability to drive past that player and i think he's getting better at whether it be going for a layup or if that layup is not on because of the help defense he's picking off that pass into the outside getting that pass out to the outside for another player who maybe knocked in a three or maybe just reset the play. But regardless, Scotty Barnes's ball security has improved a little bit over the last few games. I think just playing in a Raptors shirt has kind of just started to settle in for him. And he's getting a little bit more confident. The nerves are starting to go away a little bit. And I think as everything progresses, all of these things I've talked about, maybe all the little bit of picky problems that I have with him are just going to slowly and slowly disappear as he gets more comfortable with the system. I have been hugely impressed with him summer league on defense. Offense, I admit, needs a little bit of work, but the Charlotte game showcased what he can do on any given night. As he enters the actual Raptors team, as he enters the NBA system, which he definitely will be when we first guys off the bench for next season, I believe that he's only going to get even better as that playmaker, as that facilitator, as that aggressive slashing sort of facilitator. Scotty Barnes, has proven absolutely to everybody he is ready to take on the NBA in full stride. So what have you guys made of Scotty Barnes's performances in Summer League so far? You've been happy, you've been not happy. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below because that wraps up for me for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are still here, be sure to hit that like button, smash the like button for NBA Summer League Week to show your support to the channel. Also helps us reach some new viewers to the channel with that YouTube algorithm. It also showcases to me that you made it to the end of the video. Make sure to check out our Twitch, twitch.tv slash amateur sports where we go live every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday to go along with the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, upload schedule on YouTube channel. That's seven days a week of content from Amateur Hour Sports. We're also uploading a lot of Twitch highlights and archives onto the archive channel. Like I mentioned, the link is down below for everything that I'm mentioning here. Also subscribe to the channel on a road to six thousand subscribers you can help us get there by subscribing and help the brand grow always remember at the end of the day believe what i say and if you disagree that is okay enjoy the grind i'll see you again next time for another video